I don't know if there are some question or comments from the audience. First to start with the discussion panel. Yes, please. Uh, Reinhard Stauder from Austria. I have a question to, to Professor Vitolo. It was an excellent presentation and you have shown that in the study by the Italian group published in Cancer, that parameters of the assessment are predictive factors. So those patients who have a bad assessment score have a worse outcome, even if you treat them with ARCHOP. So which are your conclusions? Have you started now to integrate those scores into your daily practice? Are you integrating them into your clinical studies? Okay, thanks for the question. I think that uh, uh, the trial uh, show that uh, Okay, I think that this, uh, this trial clearly shows that uh, if you uh, classify the patient according to geriatric uh, scale, you better define uh, the treatment that you can give to this patient. I mean that elderly fit patient, regardless of, of the age, even in patients more than uh, 75 or 80, if they are fit enough, they can be treated with uh, rituximab chop standard chemotherapy and they have a, a very good uh, uh, outcome. And so I'm, probably we need, uh, we, we started to use these uh, parameters in the standard uh, practice. It's not difficult uh, because it doesn't take a lot of time just to, uh, to, uh, to, to do some questions to the patient. Uh, and, uh, and on the other hand, you can, uh, uh, identify uh, unfit or frail patients that uh, uh, you, it's a waste, it should be a waste of, of time, not also for us, but for the patient just to start with intensive treatment because the prognosis of this patient with the standard intensive treatment is not uh, as good as uh, we would like to do. Thank you. Okay. S thank you. Uh, <coughs> I think that the uh, we have covered diffuse large B cell lymphoma and we may look at another uh, lymphoma that is frequent in elderly patients, follicular lymphoma. And uh, the problem may not, uh, not be the same for patients with follicular lymphoma. So what is opinion on how to treat a patient with follicular lymphoma age uh, 75? 75. Stage Stage okay. four. Hold, hold <laughs> Okay, this is a, a, a frequent population of patients, and it's important to differentiate those patients who uh, are asymptomatic at diagnosis, because I think this patient, the watch and wait strategy is a, a correct uh, strategy. But in symptomatic patients, according to the yield uh, criteria, for example, um, the, the, the risk is the, the comorbidity, the, the use of steroids in this, in, in this patient is uh, sometimes complicated. Um, actually, I treat this patient with uh, CBP in combination with rituximab, but I think that this patient can be uh, benefit for, for example, for bendamastine in combination with, with rituximab. It's a very attractive regimen, and Dr. Rammel has a, a lot of experience with this uh, disease scheme. Um, if, if the patient have a, a limited stage, uh, I think the radiotherapy is the, the standard treatment in, in this setting. Matthias? So <clears throat> I would consider the elderly patients for a watch and wait period until they have symptoms, despite the presented abstract at ASH from the English lymphoma group where they treated right away with rituximab and compared it to watch and wait. This was a very, very meaningful study. However, it is by far too short, the observation period, before you can draw some final conclusions. In the other trial presented by the same author, Adeshna, he randomized cloambucil against watch and wait, and he waited 15 years before he could present mature results. So at the moment now, I'm still thinking, and I'm convinced that the watch and wait period in asymptomatic patients is absolutely the good one. And if patients are in need of treatment with a follicular or indolent lymphoma, I treat them with bendamastin rituximab. I don't see any reason for a more aggressive way like chopless rituximab. And because in our trial, bendamastin rituximab was superior even to chopless rituximab, 
we will not consider something like CVP or cloambesios. So all patients in Germany and in my study group are treated with bendamax and rituximab with a follicular lymphoma. In that zone? Well, I certainly agree uh, with uh, Matthias Dotok analysis. Uh, first of all, we have to decide if the patient uh, need to be treated or not. I mean, mainly in an elderly, I aware of the data that was presented at DASH, but I agree with Matthias that uh, uh, in a symptomatic patient, probably uh, still so far, it's better to wait uh, and uh, until the disease progresses or there is some symptoms, uh, uh, because the data for the rituximab single agent that were, were presented have an advantage in time to sense treatment, but uh, I'm not sure that it can translate uh, in a real advantage uh, uh, for the patient. In most, uh, at least we have to wait. But in symptomatic patients, as there are a lot of symptomatic uh, follicular lymphoma patients, uh, I think I, we usually give uh, a, mm, a brief uh, amount of chemotherapy. That means uh, uh, three, four courses uh, of chemo usually, and uh, with uh, uh, the standard doses of rituximab, I mean eight doses. We just closed uh, um, two years ago, and the final analysis we'll do uh, in the next month, uh, a trial in elderly follicular lymphoma patient in which we gave uh, four courses of fludarabine, um, mitoxventron, and dexamethasone plus eight doses of rituximab that the patient were randomized to receive rituximab, a brief course of rituximab and maintenance or not. And um, the, the treatment was very well manageable. Uh, the, the CR was 72%, the root series, uh, and the progression to survival is good. So, uh, of course, we can't use bendamastin in first line, and now, uh, probably uh, with, um, with bendamastin, through that, I mean, Novantron can maybe can be substituted by uh, bendamastin, of course. But uh, what I, just to stress that, it, I will give uh, just a brief uh, a, a courses of chemo just to reduce the bulk of the disease and, and then treat the patient uh, with, uh, uh, with monoclonal antibiotics, with rituximab. Are there some questions from audience concerning the follicular issue? If not, I have a question for the, for the panel concerning uh, um, the relapsed elderly follicular uh, patient. Uh, what is your daily practice in this particular subset of patients? Miguel. This is a uh, important question because it's a usual, it's a usual patient. Of course. Uh, <laughs> Unfortunately, um, in this patient, it's very important the, the symptoms at, at the time of the relapse because the relapse is not uh, always a uh, criteria for the treatment. So, in the elderly, I, I have to, to manage this patient with a watch and wait uh, strategy. And uh, if, if the patient is asymptomatic at the relapse, but if the, the patient needs uh, treatment, uh, I think the, the novel agents have a, a role in this, in this patient. Obviously, uh, rituximab, sevalin are option in, in, in this patient. But I think the, the new drug, vendamastin, lenalidomide, can be a, a, a role in, in, this, uh, in this setting. Matthias? So if a patient relapses with a follicular lymphoma, Again, not everybody needs to be treated immediately, so we wait again as in frontline until the patient becomes symptomatic. <clears throat> and then, if we need treatment uh, in Germany, at least we consider if the patient would be eligible for a treatment with Zevalin. This would be in a small tumor size in a symptomatic patient without a high degree of bone marrow infiltration. When we cannot use Zevalin, we also consider again a rituximab containing chemotherapy. You can easily retreat the patient with bendamustin because bendamustin does not have accumulative organ toxicity to the kidney, liver, or heart. So if the response duration was long enough, you could, of course, consider uh, the same treatment again. And um, of course, the rituximab maintenance is a very important issue in the relapsed patients once you have achieved the response. Excuse me, yes. the retreatment with bendamastin, is it dependent by the timing from the first treatment with Benda? 
Yes, of course, we in don't have... In terms of the response, in terms of the... Yes, of course, we don't have the data for that, but this is according to our clinical experience. If the patient only responded for six months, it would make no sense to retreat him. If he has responded for two years, then patients very often ask again for the same treatment because they tolerated it very well. Thank you. Umberto? Well, uh, I think that... Uh, well, I think the common practice in Italy now is that uh, when a patient, a follicular lymphoma patient relapsed, uh, probably the most popular drug is, is bendamastin plus uh, rituximab in, in, it, since the last couple of years. Uh, I think there are different options because it depends uh, on the, uh, of the disease. I mean, how uh, the disease is uh, extended to the bulk uh, or not, uh, or the bone marrow is involved or not. In my experience, radiomunotherapy in elderly is very well tolerated. They produce a high response rate, a durable response, but I know that uh, radiomunotherapy is not uh, very popular uh, in Italy. I think on, only myself and Pierluigi continue to use it, but I think it's a very nice drug for follicular lymphoma. The, and uh, so you, at, in elderly probably there is, uh, in, in, elder, in elderly patients that relapse with follicular lymphoma, we may have some room to treat this patient without chemotherapy because there are some interesting data uh, from different associations, rituximab uh, plus lenalidomide, rituximab plus bortezomib again, that may have uh, uh, effective uh, efficacy in this patient. And um, so the, if the patient uh, may have some contraindication to chemotherapy, you may treat the patient without chemotherapy. The second point is that because Matthias uh, mentioned the rituximab maintenance and relapse, of course, everybody of us uh, use the rituximab maintenance and relapse. But I think we have to think that uh, um, from now on, uh, uh, rituximab is approved in the first, in the, as a maintenance, the first line. Uh, according to the PRIMA studies, and I don't know as, uh, when we treat the pa our patient with rituximab chemo, rituximab maintenance in first line, when they relapse, uh, we are treated with rituximab chemo. If the rituximab maintenance relapse uh, uh, will have some uh, uh, efficacy or not, because these patients are exposed to uh, tons of rituximab, I think. So. So the issue of the maintenance and relapses it will be rediscussed with the, after PRIMA study. Yes. Yeah. And in, in, this, in this setting, it's important, um, um, and, and in, you see the, the result of the, the two interactive questions, the inclusion of, of patients in clinical trials, because there are very interesting drugs in, in clinical trials, uh, for example, galiximab and, and another one. But I, I think that it is the, the, the population where clinical trial um, all, all must be an effort to include patients in, in, this, in this situation. Yeah, it's a subject of this particular yeah. issue of patients. Petra? So the, the last question, uh, when are you moving to a palliative treatment in patients over 70? Is it a question of line of treatment or a response to previous line? What, what is your... Uh, what you do in clinical day-to-day uh, -day practice? About the palliative treatment, in this? Yes. Uh, usually it's um, in, in patient without any option of, of, of treatment. Um, in, in my practice, very, very common to use a low, uh, for example, low dose of cyclophosphamide for this patient without any option. Um, low dose of corticosteroids in the same uh, patient, but um, I try to, to avoid the symptoms in this, in this patient. If the patient is asymptomatic, uh, no, no treatment you know, you know, at all, but if patient has, uh, has symptoms, I use uh, low dose of cyclophosphamide or um, uh, corticosteroids. Matthias? So you mean in aggressive lymphoma, if they had relapses? What, what is the, the type oh. of treatment? The question is more when than what type of treatment. So, um, and we are not oncologists, but hematologists. <laughs> <remember that. laughs> so um, when patient really becomes um, not responsive to the previous chemotherapy, I would not consider him to retreat again because then an older patient will have at least a toxicity but probably no efficacy. And in such a treatment, I also give um, the alkylating agents like trophosomid, which is um, an, an oral 
available compound. I treat many patients with that. And also uh, we treat them um, sometimes with a, a smaller dose of bendamustine single agent. It can be given with 50 or 70 milligram per meter square. Also we saw some responses. Um, but uh, again, in the palliative situation, we consider um, steroid treatment in some uh, circumstances. Uh, well, I think it depends on histology because uh, uh, for indolent or follicular lymphoma, uh, uh, before going to a palliative feature, you have to consider that this patient uh, may be treated with very gentle approach, as I said before, even in second and third laps. Uh, I mean, uh, they, be, they may be treated without chemo, uh, with uh, rituximab, a single agent, or association of rituximab. Uh, plus Velcade or maybe other drugs. Uh, and uh, as they may respond even at the, at the second or third relapse. In aggressive lymphoma, uh, I, well, I would usually treat the patient at the first relapse. I would try to treat them. But uh, if the patient is an elderly patient that uh, is a progressive uh, after rituximab chop uh, in a brief time, I mean, a couple of months after the end of the chop, probably there's no chance uh, for this patient, uh, and if uh, so, I think this uh, is a candidate for palliative treatment or a second relapse uh, uh, in aggressive lymphoma. And uh, we usually use uh, BP16 uh, for us, uh, or in mantle cell, maybe RC that is a good drug for mantle cell, substituted subcutaneously in a low doses, uh, and alkylating agents. Uh, uh, usually, uh, not intravenously, but uh, for us, uh, just to uh, to leave the patient out uh, out of the hospital. Okay, I, th I think we can. Oh, there is a question. Fantastic. Yes, Doctor Hill from Madrid, Spain. It's a question to Doctor Matthias Bummel about the um, substitution of uh, adriamycin by uh, liposomal doxorubicin in elderly patients with RSC lymphoma. What is your opinion? So the Austrian study group has investigated that in detail and they presented promising results for substituting them with liposomal doxorubicin, which was in that study the myoset. And um, the problem is really to identify with good diagnostic procedures who cannot tolerate the doxorubicin. And this question has not been solved so far. And of course, in Germany, we would have a lot of reimbursement problems if we would use the myoset instead of doxorubicin, but it's an attractive alternative. However, also, if you think about it, you can have a longer infusion time of doxorubicin. If the patient has a central venous catheter, you could give it over 12 or 24 hours, and then again, you have a much lower cardiotoxicity. So there are some possibilities to decrease the cardiotoxic risk. Yeah. <laughs>